Hey everybody on YouTube, Carl Alexander here, and in today's video, I'm going to do a quick review of the zombie survival game, Seven Days to Die. Now this game has been out for quite a while, it was released in June of 2013, and is still in early access. In 2016, it was released to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and even has Linux and Mac OS support as well. So whatever platform you're on, you're covered. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Alpha 16 PC version. Seven Days to Die describes itself as the survival horde crafting game, and that's a pretty accurate description. The game combines elements from several different games to create a sort of open world zombie survival minecraft. Over a period of seven days you will have to eat, drink, scavenge, and build fortifications to survive a zombie horde that comes on the night of the seventh day. After each seven day horde, the game's zombies become more powerful and spawn more frequently. As far as I know, there is no traditional win condition, you just keep surviving as long as you can. The game can be played in single player, multiplayer with friends, and even as an open multiplayer PvP server. It's an ambitious concept, and it delivers on that concept for the most part. However, right off the bat, the game's most glaring issue is performance. For a game that's been around for four years, it runs poorly. The game was built on the Unity game engine, so honestly not that big of a surprise. Unity is a great tool for indie devs, but games of this scope just seem to push the engine beyond what it's meant for. My 7600K and GTX 1070 can barely get 60 FPS at 1440p, and from the footage that may be surprising considering its graphical fidelity. But that's just the reality of Unity. Once you play for a while, the performance issues just become a part of the experience. I wish the game was more fluid, but I also understand using a more expensive, complicated engine would require resources beyond most indie developers. Visually, the game is a mixed bag. Textures are hit and miss, as are objects, animations, and zombies. The game does take advantage of Unity's good lighting, so at moments the game can look pretty good. But for the most part, I would say the game's graphics are just serviceable. Which isn't to say they're terrible, they just probably won't be winning any awards. The same applies to the audio as well. The sound effects seem to be very standard for the genre, if not a bit underwhelming. Positional audio works pretty well, making it easy to know if zombies are close, but it has issues with buildings where zombies on different floors can sound like they're right next to you. The game doesn't feature a traditional soundtrack, but does have some riffs that let you know when certain events are taking place. Overall, the presentation of Seven Days to Die isn't the selling point. It's an indie game and has an indie game look. The unique and deep gameplay is where it really shines. In many ways, it's comparable to Minecraft or any resource gathering crafting game. You start with a tutorial on how to craft some simple survival gear like an axe, bow and arrow, and fire pit, but that's about it. The game doesn't hold your hand and does expect you to figure out quite a bit on your own. The interface makes this easier than you'd expect as you can quickly search for items to make and what it takes to make them. Find some random object in the world and you can usually look up what you can make with it. Most of the information you'll need to survive is right there in the menu system, and though it is easy to learn, there are things you'll just have to figure out as you go. Cooking, crafting, and building are all relatively easy to understand, but I haven't even scratched the surface of what you can do. Just scrolling through the base recipes is impressive. Now, that's not to say the interface and crafting mechanics are perfect. There isn't a good way to see your current status quickly, the quick select mechanic doesn't work very well, and it's got some odd quirks that get annoying. I mean seriously, when you repair a weapon in the middle of a zombie fight, you'd expect it would return to its original location in your quick select bar. But no, it returns to your inventory where you have to move it back to your bar. Sounds like a small gripe, but it's put me in some very precarious situations. Still, even with some annoying little bugs, the depth in the crafting is what I think sets it apart from so many other games. You can't just play this for a few hours and understand it all. However, because of that, the game can be a bit frustrating in the early hours. I was lucky enough to have several friends walk me through the basics, but before I did, I felt incredibly lost. So moving on, building fortifications and modifying structures is an important aspect of surviving the Seven Day Horde. And fortunately, building uses a grid-based system similar to Minecraft, making it easy to understand. However, it also utilizes a physics engine that doesn't allow you to make islands in the sky. So whatever you make will need to be structurally sound. It's a nice touch that makes it harder to exploit the game's mechanics. Beyond building and crafting, you'll obviously also have to fight off zombies while searching and scavenging. The combat is clunky. 
especially melee combat. Zombies get up in your face, and getting hit is serious. You can quickly be killed or severely injured if you approach combat recklessly. I didn't quite believe my friends when they told me to always use a bow to knock them over and then kill them, but after dying four or five times, I finally wised up. Dying in game is serious, but not always catastrophic. It will reduce your stamina and health stats, and you will drop everything you had, but you can return to your body to find your items, just like Terraria or Minecraft. However, if you're playing on a PvP server, your items would be up for grabs. You can also slowly regain your health stats by drinking tea, taking vitamins, and in general, staying in good health. Maintaining your health is a big part of the early game. Finding food, antibiotics, and getting clean drinking water are all priorities. Dysentery, infection, and injuries are all things that can severely impact your progress. However, even once you think you're safe, things can go horribly wrong. For example, my friends and I had a nice store of bacon and eggs and plenty of water, but after a mini zombie horde attacked our base, we lost it all. Suddenly, nine days in, we were back to square one, trying to find water and animals to kill for food. Honestly, there is so much to this game I can't cover in a regular review. What I think makes it great is all the random stuff that happens. Suddenly having your base overrun by a horde before the seventh day is terrifying. Watching my friend be chased around by a feral zombie and then running into a feral zombie horde was intense. There is a randomness to this game that makes it more fun, and you can change just about every setting you can think of to impact that randomness. Hell, you can even now create random maps so the experience will be different every single time. Beyond its less than stellar performance and visuals, Seven Days to Die is a good game. It has unique gameplay that combines elements of so many other great titles into a crafting survival game that separates itself while having familiar mechanics. Its focus on cooperative gameplay is one of its strongest elements, and its seven day cycle of zombie hordes keeps you focused and goal oriented. There is always a bigger threat coming, and that means your goal is to always be surviving. Unlike so many other games, where survival becomes trivial as you progress. I'm not sure I can recommend this game for its single player alone. At $25 and still in early access after 4 years, I just don't see this as a great single player experience. But playing with friends is another story. If you know people who are interested or already playing, pick this up. Especially if you can get it on sale. It's certainly not a polished game, but it's a unique experience that I've really enjoyed. Okay everybody, that was my video for this week. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, I think you know what to do. Leave a comment in the comments section. And as always, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one in the future. If you want to get in touch with me directly, you can follow me on Twitter. And if you want to support the channel directly, consider contributing to my Patreon. Coming up soon, I'll have a video on another survival game, The Long Dark. I've already done a review of the early access portion a while back, and now I'll be reviewing the long-awaited story mode, Wintermute. So be looking out for that video, and as always, thanks for watching.